What's up gaming heroes and welcome back to another awesome World of Warcraft video. In today's video, I'm going to be teaching you some lazy gold making methods for those people who just work a lot and they've only got like one hour a day to log in, get their playing done in the morning or in the evening and that's all they've got time for for gold making. Thank you as always to my wonderful patrons who continue to support the channel with their real life money it is so cool of you guys we now have a team of five writers including myself who write and produce articles for rosiumtv.com which is basically a world of warcraft guides website where anyone who supports me on patreon can access those guides Right, so this first one we're doing is over in Nashatar, and it is in the cave just under the G, as I like to say. This cave, you can find the Cavern Dark Terror, and the Cavern Dark Terror drops a pet called the Cavern Dark Terror. <laughs> and this can be sold on the auction house for a banging amount of gold. However, you do have to get pretty lucky to get this. I suggest keeping PvP on to get the tokens as well, which can be used to buy pets additionally in Nashatar. Second of all, we have this wonderful warlock farm, which I basically just log into my warlock and I kill the sentry every single day for a chance of the pet or additionally the sealed tomb of Lost Legion. Both of these in one drop if you're super, super lucky. Definitely worth doing this every day. You can do additional farms with your warlock, but I personally don't like to do that. I don't like to run around. I just kill the one sentry and that's it. Then we move on to the Nagrand farm. This is a really common farm at this point. I've made this video so many times. And so it's an ever just revolving circle of Nagrand Raz pets. This is just one I do all the time. The, I'm not going to lie. The pets don't sell huge amounts for me on my server. However, they are consistent sales. And it's so easy to do that I just do over and over again. Then we are over in the Dread Waste. Now the Dread Waste are really interesting because they've got two rares which both drop pets and they are both right next to each other. So I highly suggest killing both of those. I have had the Grinder, I believe one is called, uh, which is basically a little elemental. And then the other one is, I believe, a water pet called Hollow Reed. And you just simply slay the, the two rare elites and you will get that really, really easy. It's the Water Striders, I do believe that they are there you go we've killed it and we move on to the next one just one second i've got to tell you guys about an awesome website called qwerty what is qwerty qwerty sells unique geeky t-shirts these t-shirts are so awesome i've actually been wearing only qwerty t-shirts for around eight to nine years i'm wearing one right now it's eevee <laughs> the reasons I like QWERTY versus like other companies is there's worldwide shipping. They're really affordable. They're almost limited edition because they only last for like two days and then you can't buy it. They give credit to all of their artists and their t-shirts are already affordable. Not to mention if you use the code Erosium at the checkout, you'll get one pound off or one dollar or one euro depending on where you're from in the world when you order. I wouldn't just do an affiliation like this for any company. I'm specifically giving an affiliation to QWERTY simply for the fact that I've been buying from them for literally eight to nine years. As you can see, I really like this company and I really suggest you check it out. So use code Erosium at the checkout when you're buying some of these awesome geeky t-shirts. But let's get back into the video. You can see there's a lot of logging in, logging out. We're back over to the Nagrand Res once again. And I think I got pretty lucky on this character. I actually managed to bag two of those rares out of the three, which is pretty cool. I can't tell you how many I sell of these. It's ridiculous. But do you know why I like doing this farm, even when I've got like loads stuck on the auction house already? It's because when a new expansion or a new patch becomes available, everyone's jumping in on that patch. And I'm just there sat throwing pets up on the auction house that I've pre-farmed already. This is what I absolutely love doing. And I highly suggest that you guys also follow suit in a similar way. Farm up pets on your off season. And then when it's back on PVE or PVP, get selling those pets in those times. It's super easy. And hey, it means less sales. Like you don't have to have like a thousand million items listed on the auction house. You have fewer items, but bigger sales. The next farm, we are over on the Timeless Isles in Pandaria where we are looking to actually kill the Jade Fire Spirit, but 
Uh, unfortunately, the Jade Fire Spirit didn't spawn for me, so I just decided to kill the other Rare Elite in the cave and then kill a couple of uh, just random Jade uh, Fire Elites, which can also drop uh, a nifty little pet as well. So I actually log in every day, just check it if this is available. If it's not, no worries, I'll carry on with my wonderful day. There's actually a load of pets on Timeless Isles, but this is just one that I personally do right now because I really enjoy it. I don't know why, I just do. It's fun running around a cave as a druid and getting it. Now we're moving on to the Lanticore farm. The Lanticore farm is, isn't is exactly one that's often talked about as much, but it's a super easy one. Unfortunately, this boss, there's no quick way of doing it. You have to clear the first room uh, of all the elites in there in order to open the doors just to get to the first boss. Then you've got to kill the first boss. Once the first boss is, uh, is dead, you can then use your macro, which is called slash target Lanticore, and this will basically just check to see if the rare Lanticore pet has spawned or not. If it has spawned, you can simply engage it in battle, destroy it with your big great axe, and then it will obviously drop a 100% drop chance Lanticore. However, the stickler here is the Lanticore doesn't always spawn, so you have to just check if it's available. I believe we got pretty un unlucky in this uh, episode, and on all three of my olds, I didn't get it. However, I do want to say uh, that farming it all week, I typically get it about twice a week. So, and, and I do this on three alts uh, every single day. I get it about twice a week. It's worth the time just logging in for a couple minutes, slaying a few mobs, checking if it's there. If it's not there, moving on, log off. Let's go on to the next character. The whole point of this is to create principal gold making that is usable every single day. Log in, kill some stuff, check if some if a rare elite's available. Not available, fine, no worries. Those days where you do get lucky though, say you do it 10 times and nine times you've been unlucky, that one time you, you have been lucky, guess what? You're making banging profit on that day and that's going to cover all of the, uh, the other days where you haven't had luck. I like to think this way with the Golden Mains Reigns as well. You know, the Golden Mains Reigns sells for 380k on a huge amount of realms right now and people are like complaining that it doesn't ever drop for them and they farmed like you know, nine hours. And my, my perspective on this is, hey, dude, if you farm for even 10 hours, that is like still 38,000 gold an hour. This is really, really good gold. So go and farm for 10 hours if it takes you 10 hours to get it. Who knows? You might even get lucky and get like, you know, a bunch of them in that time. Either way, you're going to get banging amounts of gold and it's going to be highly worth your time. This takes me, what, two to three minutes of just checking to see if it's there every day on each character that's fine no problem when i do get one i know it, the pet's going to be worth between 30 and 80 thousand gold so it's a it's a winner winner chicken dinner situation we're back over at the nagran rares we kill them again now you probably noticed that i i do this a lot on many of my alts and the reason for that is it's kind of a multi-farm you're killing three rares to get three pets but also you're getting garrison resources and garrison resources can be used at your garrison to trade uh, with your trading post for just general warlords of Drenor trade goods. So this is basically means that you are also generating loads of extra income from these materials that you're swapping for favorable trades. It's a really good way of just checking in, getting extra gold, checking out, and so on and so forth. Now, I got a little bit of a suggestion for you. If you are checking these, you know, these rares or you are doing the Nagran rares specifically, the Nagran rares have about a one minute to two minute uh, basically respawn period so i don't like to have a bunch of alts like lined up where they're all sat and nagrand i don't think it makes sense so what i like to do is i basically log into an alt that kill all the nagrand rares then i log into another alt which is actually doing a whole different farm altogether do that farm then log onto the next alt which is back at the nagrand rares that's why you keep seeing me kind of go back to the nagrand rares onto the next farm back to the nagrand rares etc so that way i don't have any downtime whatsoever with you know logging in logging out it's kind of a blag the logging in logging out i really wish it was a bit faster but there's not really anything you can do there is something worth noting that when you're doing this lanticore farm um make sure that you run back out of the instance if you don't run up back out of the instance because it's a heroic instance you actually get teleported back to your hearthstone which is going to be really annoying if you log out within the instance you, you don't want to have to travel all the way back to black rock spire so better off just doing this nice and easily i highly suggest spamming the macro slash target lanticore whenever you're doing this farm but make sure you only spam this macro 
if you've killed the first boss. It won't work if you've not killed the first boss. So don't even waste your time otherwise with that, guys. It's super, super important. The whole perspective of the type of gold farming we're going for here is the the whole idea that you don't have millions of hours to play the game. You don't have uh, the knowledge to, you know, check the auction house and find those really, really good deals and make tons of gold that way. So you are more of a, I, I not not say a simpler player, but a, a player who just likes to keep things simple, right? You like to play the game in an easy way. So you log in, you kill a bunch of rares and you log out. Now it is worth noting that this is quite a hard thing to do for a new player because you're going to need a few alts level 50 plus in order to do this. The good thing is though, however, you it is quite easy to level to level 50 in World of Warcraft. So you don't have to worry too much. You can just very simply level all your characters up uh, to level 50. It only takes about three or four hours to hit level 50, depending on how good you are. And then you've got another ult ready to do more farming. This is one of those situations where you've got to put some initial effort in. But once you've done the initial effort, it reaps huge amounts of, of rewards and awards over and over again where the gold just trickles in and we can be greedy little goblins screaming with joy. Gold! <laughs> oh, is it just me that does that? Okay, it's just me. Oh, all right. We'll, we'll pretend that didn't happen. Okay, that didn't happen. We'll move on. Let's, uh, let's carry on with some lanticore farming. And this is a bit of a shot in the dark, this one. I, uh, I log into the cave in Stranglethorn Vale. And uh, if the rare is up, I kill it. If I don't, then I don't. But it's, it's virtually never up. I've never seen the rare up. It gets killed so often. Then we go over to Loch Modan, where we find Boss Garrosh. I think his name is or, or Garrosh or something like that. It's a very confusing name for me to say for some reason. But this guy drops a support girdle, which is a rare transmog, which sells for an absolute banging profit. He is usually up every time I, I go and check on him, but I've never had the support girdle drop. Yeah, I am excited for it to drop uh, when it does, but I'm just going to keep farming it. Then we move on to Swamp of Sorrows, where we will be looking for the living cow. This drops super easily. You just kill the rare. He's usually always up, but uh, I got one of the unlucky periods when he wasn't up. So. Hey ho, oh well, I had a little fly around just to check. There is a bunch of other rare elites in Swamp of Sorrows, but we just didn't want to check on them this time. We just focused on the one that, you know, brings in the most profit, which is this, uh, this one here. But unfortunately, it didn't spawn. So we move on on to the next farm. Next farm is in Dusk Wallow Marsh, where we, uh, we're on Alcatraz Island. You can only get here using slow fall. So you have to fly up in the air. Um, basically fly forward towards Alcatraz Island. You can't stay on your mount because uh, the guns will shoot you away from the island and basically dismount you. Uh, it's, it's an instant. <laughs> it, you can't get past it, guys. So you have to use slow fall and then slow fall your way onto the island and get into that room where you can kill uh, the, the big guy for the big red ray gun. Then we're over in Argus where we are farming for the rebellious imp. You just have to kill all the imps in this cave until they drop enough imp meat for you to make a delicious feast. Or, or disgusting feast, I think it is. <laughs> Deliciously disgusting. And, uh, and effectively use this on the pool with uh, the dead fish in. And then it will spawn the mother who you will kill. And then she will effectively drop the rebellious imp. Which I've actually had four times now. I, I found this on two characters. I don't think I found it on two characters in this video. But I do find this on two characters every day. It's really quick to get 100 imp meat. Uh, it's nice and easy. Not all of my characters have unlocked, um, you know, Argus. So I can't do it on all of my characters. But I do have a couple characters that have it unlocked. And it is fairly easy to unlock. It's just a short quest line in Dalaran. Uh, we have to go collect something and then uh, eventually unlock it. It's quite easy, quite simple. And it uh, doesn't take too much work. So get yourself these, uh, these imps killed. And then you can go ahead and summon Mother. As you can see, we've got enough for making this feast. We make the feast and we stick it in this pool just here where Mother suddenly spawns and we just have to defeat her nice and easily. Defeat Mother and she will have a chance of dropping the Rebellious Imp. As I say, I've had this a few times now and uh, it's quite a fun little pet. It sells so quickly on the auction house. Oh my gosh. 
Now we're over in Veil of Eternal Blossoms. This is an interesting one, actually. This is an LFR raid. The flesh shaping we're going to do first. And this has a chance of dropping two pets from, from uh, the LFR flesh shaping. The first boss doesn't drop anything of importance to us. So we'll skip that and we'll go straight to the, uh, the second and third boss in the, uh, the Halls of Flesh Shaping. The second boss is Primordius and he drops uh, a Slimeling, uh, an Oozling or something like that. And, and that is worth actually a very pretty penny. I've not actually been lucky enough to get this once yet. I just get really unlucky with it every single time. Uh, but it is what it is. I think it's called the Living Oozling or something like that. Uh, uh, dude, I farm so many pets, I forget the names of these left, right, and center. If you want to check it out for yourself, just hold Shift and J in game, and you can actually check what each boss drops in terms of loot, and then that way you can keep track of what it is you're trying to farm, etc., etc. The uh, the third boss in this raid as well also drops a pet, uh, which is called I believe Sons of Animus which uh, you just have to kill the Dark Animus and he can drop the, the Sons of Animus super easily. It, you'd have to wait for him to charge up his ability of Doom, uh, but once he's done that, he is pretty easy to kill as a level 50 plus. He can't hurt you, so don't worry too much. Just get it done nice and easily. Once you've done that, you need to then sign up. You need to then just leave Instance Group, go back to where you were, which is back in Veil of Eternal Blossoms, then sign up back on the LFR for the very bottom LFR, which is Garrosh Hellscream. You'll be killing two bosses in here, the first and the second boss, which both have a chance of dropping a pet. Simply blast through these corridors, killing all the orcs on the way, and then you, you'll be taking the first door on the left, which is to get the bumling. Skip the intro and just stay up here until all of the ads have spawned. You need to wait for these ads. As, uh, as they do have to come through for you uh, to be able to engage this boss. Kill all the ads and then jump down and slay this boss to get the bombling. Unfortunately, we didn't get it as per usual. Team never lucky. And uh, we're moving on to the next farm, which is Kovac. And Kovac can drop from these, uh, these blasted bug men thingies. <laughs> and we just had to kill them. Be careful with this one, though. Um, I've, I actually make it bug out all the time when I'm doing this. So I actually make this bug out all the time when I'm doing this. And so make sure that you, you don't slay them too quickly or you will make them bug out. Don't worry if it does bug out. You just have to wait for the boss to respawn. You'll know if it bugs out because there'll be no loot offered. However, it's worth noting you can only farm these raids once a week to get loot. So don't try and farm it uh, multiple times. You can do it on different difficulties. But if you're doing it on LFR like I am, you can only do it once a week. Simply click the amber and wait for the, the bosses to spawn. When they spawn, you simply slay them and get your loot. Hopefully you get Kovac. I have had this twice, uh, this Kovac pet. It does drop quite nicely for me, to be fair. I don't know why. I'm just super lucky. I found this on three different characters. So there you have it. We've got some really cool pets for you to go and farm and some just lazy, easy, chill, relaxed gold for you to get your greasy mints on. Thank you so much for watching this video. Really, really appreciate it. Make sure you smash the like button and you click subscribe. Check out my Patreon if you want to get access to more content just like this and support me at the same time. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. This is a Rosium out.